Our students, Brian Proctor, back again with another lesson, and welcome to part three of Let's Make a Comic Book Together. And this one's going to be on references and backgrounds. This is really important, so yeah, stay with it. If you want to do a good comic book, if you want to do a comic book and you want to make your comic book stand out above everybody else's comic book, all this information is important. So don't don't try to skip it to get to the dessert. OK, you got to eat them vegetables before you get to that dessert. So chew them vegetables and then when you swallow it, then you can get to the dessert. So let's go eat some vegetables. All right. Welcome back. This is, should be part three of Let's Draw a Comic Book Together. This one's going to be on reference, reference, references and backgrounds. Now, if you have your story already and you have kind of an idea for your character, don't even worry about your character being 100% complete. Work on your background and your references. If your person lives in a small town, and this is a picture I took of, uh, I forgot where this was. This was an old picture, but I, I needed to know what the buildings look like. So this is a good thing for you to have. Start finding references of where your person is going to be in your story. If your person is going to go to a bar, find pictures of a bar, a type of bar that you might like. Change it around, tweak it a little bit. You know, if your person is going to go to a pool, if he's going to go to the beach, start getting these pictures now of what you want, uh, what your background is going to look like. That way, it saves a lot of time. And two, it saves a lot of thought because... You, I can take these buildings and I can add a couple extra windows somewhere to change it so it won't be the same extra building. Or I can take these round windows and square them out and I can make something on top of this building, you know, remove the truck or, or put some extra cars there or change the color, whatever. But that helps when you have your reference, like your character, female character. What's her hair going to look like? A lot of people's like, um, you know, how, how do you draw hair? How do you draw hair? The best way to draw hair is find out what it looks like. And then draw it. You know, you're gonna have to. If your character is gonna have hair like this, what does that look like from the back? What does it look like from the side? You know, if you uh, if you're a female, use your hair. Uh, if you have a little sister or a mom, you know, use her. Ask her to, you know, turn to the back. You comb her hair or something. If she's really into what you're into, if she loves you, she'll she'll do that. She'll model for you. You know, uh, same thing. Hands. Do people? How do you draw hands? Put your hand there. Have have you have you holding something and then take a picture of it. Who doesn't have a, a cell phone with a camera on it? You know, just little things like this. What does it look like when you're drawing somebody inside of a car? Just little teeny things like this. If you if you ha have old magazines or old newspapers, just look at stuff. Because I have, I don't want to say boxes, but I have so much just little stuff for reference, which I've learned it. Because when you look at something, the more you draw something, it stays in your memory. It's like uh, muscle memory. That's how people can draw, you know, anatomy, you know, well, people say, oh, how, how can you draw anatomy like that? Because, you know, you draw it over and over and over. It just becomes like second nature to you. You, you already know what it looks like because it's like a puzzle. You take a puzzle, you put a puzzle, puzzle together. It may be hard the first time, but you take it apart and put it together again, take it apart, put it together again. And eventually you just... And that puzzle's done because you've done it so many times. So reference material, reference material, and then draw. Now these little things like this, these things, these little flyers you get in, in your uh, newspaper that nobody uses unless it's a good coupon, these things are so, so valuable. If your character, your character's going to sleep somewhere, if he's got a nice bedroom, this is perfect. You might say, okay, that's, that's not his style, but... Look at the, the angle that you can draw it from. You already got your, your perspective set. You know, you, you got your little, your, your little, uh, little whatever you call these little Chester things. Nice little dresser here, window here. You can take the window out, push the bed over, or change the design for the headboard. If he doesn't have a headboard, throw some shoes or something in there. This Things like these are so important. Your living room. You have your living room. You have so many different living room styles. Your character has an apartment, he has a house, whatever. What is it? Um, dining room. You know, it, as I say, I don't know what your story is about or what your character, but I'm sure your character has a home somewhere if it's, if it's modern, contemporary, or futuristic. You know, now if you're going into the future, that's, or, or you know, some kind of sci fi, that's another thing. Um, 
the um, designs, like, you know, if you're in the, in the science fiction, you're going to do a little science fiction book. Uh, what does your, your ship designs look like? You know, what is, you, can, you don't have to steal Star Trek and go to jail, but you can use some of the design elements, the lines, the, the little grill. There's, there's just so much you can take from something, which is what they do anyway, to um, make their designs. You know, what does, you know, what does the base look like? What is it the, the um, what do you want to call that? The, the space station might look like. I think this is a flip out, fold out. Yeah, what does the space station look like? You have a bit of reference right there. What kind of weapons, you know, are they going to use? What kind of weapon designs are they going to use? What about uh, the uniform? The uniform design. What does the uniform look like from the front, from the back? What is he wearing? Let's just say you have a soldier. Your character is a soldier. So what kind of gun is he going to use? What kind of tactical gear is he going to wear? You know, so these, these things are invaluable. That's why I say, I think I said in, in the last video, don't walk around through life with your head up in the clouds. Stop and look at stuff. Look at how glass is broken. Look at how smoke rises. Look at how the water hits a rock on the shore whenever you go to the beach. Look at how, you know, um, uh, whatever, a Coke can looks, you know, in a, in a dumpster. Look at a dumpster. What is it? What's the shape of a dumpster? If I said draw a dumpster with trash all coming out of it, could you do it? Have you actually stared at a dumpster? Find reference material. Find reference material. You know, I could use this uh, for uh, a, a sniper thing. Maybe this guy is set up on a roof somewhere or behind a rock and he's about to shoot a demon. And uh, hey, I got that right there. People do that all the time. Don't think that you cannot use somebody's position to uh, draw your thing. Because somebody asked me, somebody said something about uh, taking a position that I drew. Because number one, if you look at a comic book, everybody's used the same flying position. Where's my book at? This, these positions are nothing new. You have to actually think hard to, you know, think of a position. You know, a punch is a punch, you know. Everybody uses a punch. Some people use stronger punches. You might split the legs. This is like a step punch. So, you know, these are not jumping over a wall. These are not original. Everybody does that. They use the same one. They just do different angles. To, to, to make it different, you have to choose another angle sometimes. That's why I did this book. And you can buy this book. I'll leave the address, the link, link uh, afterwards or below. So... Reference material, you got to have that reference. I'm telling you, you got it. It makes life so much easier. So when you get these little ads in the in the mailbox, don't throw them away. Look through it. Look through it. Say, okay, so this is what that looks like. This is what that looks like. Okay, this perspective is this way. That perspective is that way. Um, you know, a, ta a chair, the, the back of a chair. How many people drew had to draw a chair? Somebody sitting in a chair. What does the back of the chair design look like? So many different things. Dresser, as I said, hair design. Just go to the store. If you have the money, go to the store and go look in the bargain bin. The, the book's for like a dollar, a dollar fifty. And then just go through it. Just see what you can use out of it. Just, you know, there, there's so much stuff in these magazines, just books, just, you know, whatever that you could, you could probably use. So start with your reference, start building your reference library up. So as I said, this guy is a soldier. These guys are soldiers. They're going to have weapons and be dressed. Let me show you the other part. These guys are soldiers, but the problem with these guys are they're a little taller than man. You know, they have the, the robotic bodies. They're like androids with um, animal. They're animal, half animal, half uh, cyborg, all killing machine. So basically, if you figure, if you took a lion and you stood a lion up on his, his, his hind legs, how tall would that lion be? So this is how I gauge the size of these guys. If you took the bear, which is just big, the bear stands up. How big would these guys be? So that bear is so big that he really could not use a gun of that size. You know, the dog could, the wolf could, the fox is a little thing, but he still could. Maybe the lions, but these guys are going to be fighting aliens. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about the tech. What kind of tech are they going to be using? Which is the reason I bought my air. I, I, won, I won, always wanted my airsoft collection. 
Number two, I use it for reference. And I'll show you a picture of the completed set after the, at the end of this video. So back again, reference. You need your reference material. What more can I say about that? Not only that, let's just say, where is it at? Start, not only collect, just reference, all type of reference material. Cut out the ones that you need and uh, keep them together. Like you say, okay, my character wakes up, you know, in bed and he's thinking about what he's going to do. So then he walks down the street and then he meets or he, you know, jumps in his red wagon and he drives. So you have all these lined up so that you don't have to do much, you know, worrying. The only thing you have to do is uh, worry about is the particular angles. So this could be like one panel if he's talking to somebody just driving. The next one might be a close-up. The next one might be a shot from behind his head. So, But you know what the interior of a car looks like. What's on the back of this? Some trees. A lot of people, you know, have trouble doing like trees and, and woods and so forth. That's something else you need to just, just pictures. You know, you have a camera. Go out there and take pictures of everything. You go to work and you pass trees, go for lunch or something, or pull over to the side of the road, take pictures of a few trees or a park or something. Have as much reference material as you can and then go out and buy one of my books so that you will be able to do the anatomy right. And then you won't have to worry about that. But we'll get into anatomy later on. I'm just blowing my own horn so that you guys can see what I've done in the past. So, yeah, short video. Let me think if there's something else that I, I want to talk about. We're talking about background reference material. We talked about the character. And we're going to get into some of the drawing in a bit. But th the most important part is your story and then your character. Flesh out your story. How long do you want your story to be? How many books do you think it's going to take to tell a story? Don't, I was going to say, don't. Don't think that, oh, I'm going to take a hundred books because it takes a while to do one book. It takes a while. To, where's this first book? This book took me, I don't know how long it was, but I did this in 2000. 2000. I didn't know anything about color. I colored the cover. I colored yeah, the cover, but the inside was black and white. And I was so afraid that people were going to say, oh, um, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. So I ended up doing a lot of where is it? The grayscale. I had the grayscale pens because it just didn't, to me, it just didn't look good black and white-ish. I mean, without, because my line weight was like really thin back then. So I ended up using a lot of grayscale pens. So it took me more time to do that. And then later on, once I learned how to color better, I started to color. But then that just takes more time. So find out how long your story should be. I would say no more than five books. If people like it, then go for a six book or hire some people to uh, help you do that. But it, it takes time and money to do a comic book. There's, there's, there, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, this particular one that I'm doing, I think I paid the, paying the guy like $600 to recolor it. This is my original color. And I didn't like it because it was not the greatest for me. So I'm paying this guy like $600 to color, recolor it. And, you know, $600 is no joke. So, yeah, it costs. If, if your skills are good, like I can hire myself out to somebody and charge them big money because I have the ability to put out a good comic book. But, you know, and, and charge them. But I was going to say something about a but. But, yeah, it's, it's expensive. It's expensive. So best to learn how to do everything by yourself. That way you don't have to worry about anybody. Now, I'm, now, there might be a few things that you just cannot do. You might not have Photoshop to color it. Uh, and that's fine. Just put it out black and white. A lot of books start out black and white. Or just use the grayscale pens like I did to just add a little light shadow to just, you know, give it that, that better effect. But... Try to learn as much as you can on your own. And then that'll make life a little bit easier. So work on your story. Get your story down. Start to finish. It's okay if you can't figure out the middle. It'll come. Develop your character. Get your character a good personality, a pleasing personality where people would want to be around your character. I mean, he could have a negative personality. That could be just him, you know. But you want people to be able to identify with your character and... Um, your surroundings as well. 
You know, look at Star Wars. I mean, you cannot identify with Star Wars surroundings, but they put so much detail into that. That's something don't don't be, you know, you know, slapping off on doing your background. Do your background, make it look good because crappy background and great background determines which book you want to buy. If I pick up your book and it's just like crappy, you just do something out there and I look at another book with the same price and it's got great background, great color, then, you know, which one am I going to buy? So, and eventually I figure Initially, I figured you're doing comic books to make money, so that's food for thought. All right, this is a very short video. So um, I think the next one we'll start getting into some drawing, but I don't want to put too many of them out too quick because I want you guys to actually do your homework. The first thing is write your story out, write your story out. My email is going to pop up here. Uh, a lady uh, wrote me last night and she said she couldn't, she didn't know anything about it, but she wanted to do comic books. And I said, I will kind of guide her as best I can, which is what prompted me to actually do this video. I was going to do another one. Well, I had plenty to do, but I said, let me do this to help those people. Since it's a new year, let me start a whole new step-by-step -step doing comic books. But yeah, my Eli, as I say, you know, if you guys... I'm not available to draw your comics. I'm sorry, unless you're paying $100 a page and I'll just throw everything to the side. But uh, I can always um, guide you. You know, like if you show me your character, I can I can tweak it and show you, oh, your shoulder's wrong, or your leg is wrong, or open this up, or your hair needs to be like that, and give you some uh, pointers on like drawing, telling a story, or um, show you a little bit about perspective. Little things that I can do, you know, which is, won't take long, I'm there for you. That's why my email is there. And I always invited people to, you know, write me. If you need some help, fine. You know, I'll help you. As I said, I cannot draw your book because I'm working on some ladies right now. I'm trying to draw my three or four comics right now by myself uh, and, and my colorist. And I decided to try to help some lady because she just wanted something for her grandkids, which I'm being held up for that because I can't even get to that right now. So, yeah. I got you though. I'm gonna help you as best I can. So with that said, let me throw my pen down. It's like throwing your towel into the ring when you get beat down too much. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the next video.